The Fallout series began as an inspired work from many forms of media and has had a variety of settings, tones, and presentations put forth by the developers. I'd like to begin with an overview of Fallout's evolution of tone from the original Fallout to Fallout in Vegas, then move into one of the inspirations of the Fallout series, the work of Walter M. Miller Jr., and why creativity is a vital aspect of media. The original Fallout, released in 1997, established the setting of the Fallout universe. Set in the remnants of the American Southwest, a dark, unforgiving wasteland was the grounds the Vault Dweller was thrust upon. Eighty-four years after the Great War cast the world into hellfire. Fallout is a true apocalypse. There is no returning back to the civilization before. Small groups of people have formed some communities, but they are dispersed and fragile. Fallout established a desperate, unforgiving world also reflected by the score, containing dark tones and metallic screeching, and in the macabre, wry humor. Fallout 2 contains much of the brutality of Fallout, but with the progression of time, now 164 years after the Great War, comes a change in genre, from a post-apocalypse to a post-post-apocalypse. Civilizations are beginning to form, structured bodies of rule, localized though growing in influence, with larger scale conflicts of interest and influence. Individuals still need to depend on themselves, however. A dependable gun and steady hand are as important as the abilities to grow, scrounge, or trade for food in the Fallout timeline. The tone of Fallout is slightly watered down too. It's still a tragedy, but in a more light-hearted fashion that allows for dark humor to shine through more prominently. Fallout 3 takes place 200 years after the Great War but combines a strange combination of tone and world building of Fallout and Fallout 2. Fallout 3 is a quirky post-apocalyptic world. The setting of Fallout is on full display. The capital wasteland is desolate, brutally oppressive, and visually confirms the utter destruction of the old world and the scars that prevent the new world from progressing. Civilizations have not begun to reform in this wasteland. Agriculture appears to be near impossible, or the environment doesn't allow for a full season of farming without raiding, displacement, or destruction. Interacting with others brings about the quirky light-heartedness that began in Fallout 2, albeit more exaggerated, tongue-in-cheek, in a strict three-value morality system of evil, neutral, and good. Fallout New Vegas has a tone unique from the previous titles again, though it has the unique property of being a true post-post-apocalypse. The world is still in ruins, but is being largely rebuilt, and major civilizations have risen and been established for nearly a century in the case of the New California Republic. Set in 2281, the Mojave Wasteland has the distinct advantage of being at least partially spared from nuclear fire due to Mr. House's defense systems, but had civilization on its doorstep. The Wasteland is still brutal, its residents are not civil by any means, and the environment is not forgiving. Agriculture is present, and communities are present that at least questionably accept newcomers to trade and work. There is at least some presence of stability on display. But the deep, depressing tone of Fallout, and to a lesser degree Fallout 3's visual setting, is not present. You might still find yourself ambushed, stabbed, robbed, and left for dead, but utter destruction, isolation, and near hopelessness no longer hover above the courier as they did the Vault Dweller. There's still inklings of it, however, and Fallout New Vegas is still a tragedy and setting, and the events that plague the residents of the Mojave Wasteland every day. As each day passes, men, women, and children are still going hungry and dying of starvation or thirst. People fight for their lives in brutal robbings or murders, sometimes simply cut down in terror. People lose weeks, months, or years of work in an instant, as both raiders and new civilizations alike take property and lives for their own. The old world still has a grip over the doings of the present too, and sometimes can allow us to understand the sufferings of people we will never meet as we can relate to all those who knew a world before nuclear Armageddon. One of the inspirations for Fallout I'd like to introduce and discuss today was Walter M. Miller Jr.'s title, a Canticle for Leibowitz, as referred to by Tim Kaine in his 2012 GDC talk, Fallout, a Postmortem. This is a fantastic book following the Roman Catholic Albertian Order of Leibowitz in the American Southwest after a nuclear apocalypse. 
who revere old technology and writings, and the new world orders that exist centuries after. It served as the basis of the Brotherhood of Steel as technological preservers. It allows the reader to enter into the world of a small abbey in the dynamics of its inhabitants in a society entirely strange to most, but still relatable. Although I believe non-intentionally inspired, Fallout's tagline, War, War Never Changes, is also epitomized in the work through its cyclical history and presentation of human nature as it spans through three sections entitled Fiat Homo, Fiat Lux, and Fiat Voluntus Tua, occurring over nearly 1300 years and were originally published as separate writings before being compiled. It is a fantastic piece of literature and I highly recommend the work, especially if you are already a Fallout fan. I'd like to read now an excerpt from the back cover. After the nuclear deluge, the blessed Leibowitz, dead now, lo these 600 years, was due for canonization. Only the Leibowitzian records of the destroyed civilization remained, and Monk spent lifetimes illuminating and interpreting his works in order to reconstruct the world as it had been. Several blessed mysteries remained. There was the document that read, Pound pastrami, canned kraut, six bagels, bring home. That was a naughty one. But the monks knew that the truth would come someday, and the world would begin again. Do you say, ridiculous? Well, look underneath. Miller's further work, St. Leibowitz and the Wild Horsewoman, also authored by Terry Bison after Miller's death, is a good book, but has some dramatic differences and doesn't quite hold up to the original work. St. Leibowitz and the Wild Horsewoman has a broader political struggle highlighted similar to Fallout New Vegas, with several unique cultures highlighted from horse riding nomads, mutant settlements, the church, and much more which are often in conflict with each other. And from this title's inside flap. In a world struggling to transcend a terrifying legacy of darkness, a world torn between love and violence, good and evil, one man undertakes an odyssey of adventure and discovery that promises to alter not only his destiny, but the destiny of humankind as well. Millennia have passed since the flame deluge, yet society remains fragmented, pockets of civilization besieged by barbarians. The church is in turmoil, the exiled papacy struggling to survive in its rocky mountain refuge. To the south, tyranny is on the march. Imperial Texarch troops, bent on conquest, are headed north into the lands of the nomads, spreading terror in their wake. Meanwhile, isolated in Leibowitz Abbey, Brother Blacktooth St. George suffers a crisis of faith. Torn between his vows and his nomad upbringing, between the Holy Virgin and visions of the wild horsewoman and his people, he stands at the brink of disgrace and expulsion from his order. But he is offered an escape of sorts. A new assignment as a translator for Cardinal Brown Pony, contentious election of a new pope, and then on the pilgrimage to the city of New Rome. Journeying across a continent divided by nature, politics, and war, Blacktooth is drawn into Brown Pony's intrigue and conspiracies. He bears witness to rebellion, assassination, and human sacrifice, and he is introduced to the sins that monastery life has long held at bay. This introduction comes in the form of Idra, a beautiful but forbidden Geni living among the deformed and mutant castouts in Texarch's most hostile terrain. As Blacktooth encounters her again and again on his travels, in the flesh, in rumors of miraculous deeds, and in the delirium of fever, he begins to wonder if Idra is a she-devil, the Holy Mother, or the wild horsewoman herself. Picturesque and passionate, magnificent, dark, and compellingly real, St. Leibowitz in The Wild Horsewoman is a brutal, brilliant, thrilling tale of mystery, mysticism, and divine madness, a classic that will long endure in every reader's memory. There are many elements to these books not on display in such depth and fallout, such as Christianity, Roman Catholicism more specifically, pagan religion, sexuality, especially in the case of the second publication, basic human needs, and language that really help imagine what a post-apocalyptic world would be like to experience.
There are pros and cons to each approach of media, video game versus novel, that ultimately should pique the consumer's imagination. These novels lack the open world possibility to explore anywhere but have much deeper content along its tracks. The Fallout series allows for a more visualized free chosen experience, but lacks much of the promptings and evocations of senses and feelings that a novel is able to inspire in the mind. When considering the two together, however, we are inspired to think, to wonder, to imagine what it would be like to smell the Mojave Wasteland. In the strain of carrying 150 more pounds of loot, the heat of the sun and the stinging of the wind blowing sand. But what if we could choose our own conversations altogether and not just a list of promptings? Knowing how the various developers of Fallout chose to depict the wasteland, how would the world of the Canticle of Leibowitz look if we wander around it in ourselves? There's no pictures to reference or exhaustive description of locations, peoples, etc. What does it mean to live an average day in either wasteland? What does it look like? There's such an unfathomable number of experiences and potential experiences in life. The effects of war on belligerents and civilians alike are before us every day in the memories of those who have had to live through them. Tales that often have tremendous throes of despair and suffering, while courage and the greatest kindnesses available still exist. If you were to create your own Fallout game, how would your experiences and imagination affect the creation? Would many of the now well-known staples such as Super Mutants, The Enclave, and Brotherhood of Steel continue to return time and time again? Or would new unique factions and creatures be present? In Fudge Muppets video, Fallout Empire, the ideal Fallout game set in Wyoming and Utah, this sort of what-if creation is displayed wonderfully. Miller's own writings, were inspired by his own experiences in World War II and the destruction of the 6th century Benedictine monastery in Italy. And now through the hundreds of years of Christianity, construction, life, destruction, and expression have managed to help influence the creation of a fictional digital world that millions have experienced through the Fallout series. This presentation, perhaps ramble would be a more appropriate term, was made mostly as a reminder to myself to be curious and ask why, and what was it like or what would it be like, when talking to and reading about others' experiences, fictional or real. So, if the evolution of Fallout and likewise similar media interests you, I recommend reading Walter M. Miller Jr.'s work, and have some fun and use your imagination. Thank you for watching. Hi, a postscript here. Uh, the same day I was making this, recording everything and all that, is the 22nd of October 2021. Rad King just put out a video entitled Fallout Bible Part 3, installment number four. My script's been written for a little bit, so I'm just keeping it the same. Very good video, covers Canticle of Leibowitz a bit as well. So go check that out if you have not, and it talks about the Fallout Bible and how that all ties into it too. He does a very great job of summing up while giving a thorough explanation of its influence on Fallout.